Hello everyone, as you know I am Paul, your eHobby guy, and today we're going to look at the very popular uh, lithium ion 18650 rechargeable battery. It is very popular in hobby electronics, but it does have its challenges, it can be dangerous, and we're going to look at it in a few different applications. We're going to look at the challenges, uh, the dangers, and how we can safely integrate it into our projects and maximize its life and its use so that it can be used safely and reliably in our projects. So we'll look at a couple of different applications that have different challenges and how we can overcome them and the number of uh, charging cycles that it can go through. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The first thing I'd like to point out is the fact that this is a 3.7 average voltage and many of our projects are not going to require 3.7 volts and so we'll look at how to overcome that. However, this goes through a charging cycle that takes it from around 3 volts up to 4.2 volts. Let's jump over to the spec sheet. We'll look at it very briefly. I won't go into a lot of detail about the spec sheet but it is definitely very important to take a look at it and understand the requirements for this so that we can work with it safely. So this is the first of two charts that are provided with this battery. Um, this is the charging, the recommended charge graph. And what I mean by that is there are three things shown on this graph. The current, which is blue, the voltage, which is red, and its capacity as it rises in green. So let's just take a look at the current first. This battery, according to this graph, should be charged at a constant current until it gets to about 50 minutes. After 50 minutes, the current should then drop off. And how do we achieve that? Well, there are a couple of different power supplies that can be used whereby we can provide constant current source. And during this time, the voltage actually varies to give us the charge that we require, the current that we require during this time. And you'll notice, once we reach this time, the voltage changes from a varying voltage to a constant voltage. During that time, the current drops down until it comes to a point at which we come to a full charge right up to the capacity of the battery. So in quick review, we start out with a constant current supply, and then we switch over to a constant voltage charging supply. This is exactly how it's spelled out by the manufacturer, and so this is exactly how we should charge the battery. And this is easy to achieve by using a simple module that's supplied. It's very inexpensive. This is all taken care of for us hobby guys, and so... Um, there's no real problem with making this happen and I'll show you briefly when we get back to the bench. Here is the second of the two charts we wanted to take a look at and this is perhaps the one that gets ignored or misunderstood the most. Remember we talked about the 4.2 voltage as a charging voltage, a max charging voltage. Well, they don't even show above 4.2 because if you do charge it above 4.2, you can cause damage. In fact, you could even cause a fire. Never do it. And similarly, if you look at the max discharge voltage, it came out at 3 volts. The chart doesn't even show below 3 volts. Why? Because you can seriously damage it or seriously shorten its life by discharging it to a voltage that's lower than 3 volts. And so it's clearly laid out here that we must not charge above 4.2 and we must provide some kind of battery protection to cut the voltage off at about 3 volts. This is the parameter that I'd like to just say one more time that's probably ignored the most and shortens the life of the battery. I am going to sneak in this third graph really quickly here. This is the number of cycles, the number of charges. So if we charge, let's say for example, this battery 50 times, we're only going to get up to about 
0.9 of the actual capacity of the battery. So as we recharge it and recharge it, the number of cycles, um, we will get a reduced life. And so just by looking at this chart, we're looking at about 300 charges before uh, the battery probably will stop accepting a charge at that point. So I just want to mention that real quick. Let's jump over to the bench. And so looking at this battery and that charging curve, first we'll look at that. Um, I said that you that can be fully taken care of and this is how it can be fully taken care of with this module. This module is a TP4056 module and so we can take a standard mini USB cable and plug it in at 5 volts. Let's just plug this guy in here and as soon as we plug this in, it's going to switch into constant current mode and put a constant current into the battery, at which time it will switch over to a constant voltage mode and bring the battery up to a full charge of 4.2 volts, at which time it will automatically cut off. Now, wasn't that easy? And this module is extremely inexpensive. Now, one thing I should mention is that it only takes care of the charge portion of the specifications called out by the datasheet. Now, if you are designing a circuit whereby you can cut the voltage off uh, or you can shut your circuit down when it hits 3 volts, that's very handy. Um, also, if you are designing a project that you can pull the battery out um, as soon as it's reached its 3 volts, and you can make a little uh, charging station with this guy and just plug it in and bring it to full charge and pop it back into your uh, project. Uh, everything is fine because we know every single time it is going to follow the curves exactly as spelled out by the data sheet. Now, as I mentioned earlier, what it doesn't do is take care of discharge. And so this module has its limitations in that if you don't have some means of shutting your circuit down when it hits 3 volts, you risk seriously damaging the battery or shortening its life tremendously. Now, if you don't have a means of controlling your voltage on your circuit to shut down at 3 volts, there is a solution to that too, and that would be this guy. This is a 03962A module. And if you look at these two modules, they're very similar to each other. You have the positive voltage coming in here. Um, here you have the two terminals that would go to the battery, which provide constant current, followed by constant voltage, exactly as prescribed. This is the input voltage here. This is a mini USB. This is a micro USB. Not that that makes a difference. But coming out of this module, you have the out plus here and the out minus. Here we have the plus and the minus for the battery. So the battery is tied into plus and minus here. And as the battery is discharging, it comes out of the out plus and the out minus here. And what that provides for is the current flowing back through this board and monitoring the output voltage. And of course, when it hits three volts, it provides a full cutoff. And so in cases where we are not in control of the discharge voltage and cutting it off at three volts by our own project circuitry, we can use this module and will completely take care of the discharge of the battery and protect it and it completely maximizes the life of the battery by using this. And so, in quick review, this module, the TP4056, takes care of the charging, and this module takes care of the charge, the same as this, but also of the discharge through the board, cutting it off at the recommended 3 volts, and therefore maximizing the life and the number of cycles that the battery can go through. And so I will take, uh, we'll just say this module, the 03962A module, and 
I'll just say, for example, that I want to use this um, to charge my battery, and I want it to discharge through this, and it's going to monitor it, like we just said, but I need 5 volts for my circuit, and I need a constant 5 volts. And so, what should I do to bring a varying voltage, it's going to vary as it's discharging from 4.2 to 3 volts. I need a constant 5 volts. In order to make that happen, we are going to bring in this guy. This is a 0.9 volt to 5 volt DC to DC boost converter. In essence, it's a switching power supply. And so no matter what voltage we have coming in from our battery, which we know is very limited from 4.2 volts to 3 volts, any voltage in between that's coming into this module, we're going to get 5 volts out of it. And so we can use the 5 volts that's coming out of this to power my project that I am requiring 5 volts. And so we're going to look at a quick example of a project I'm working on. And the reason we use this module is to get up to the 5 volts and I have a couple of different requirements that I'll go over and how I overcame those problems and we'll move on. So here's a project I'm working on. Here we have the 03962A charger and it's going to be tied into my 18650 battery which I'm going to use to power uh, and this is going to be a Bluetooth speaker um, project and I want to be able to use this battery to the maximum. I want to be able to charge it up fully and get the most number of cycles its biggest life so that uh, I get the best value for my money. This battery was about a dollar. So out of this battery we go into this module because remember this module is uh, monitoring discharge as well and we come into this boost converter. Now this boost converter gives me a constant 5 volts even though the battery is varying from 4.2 to 3 volts. So I have a constant 5. Now I have a problem. Here I have a Bluetooth module that requires 3.8 volts DC. The amp requires 5 volts DC so that's no problem. We can just power that directly. But I need to be able to provide 3.8 volts to the Bluetooth module. One way to achieve that is another module. Look at this. This can provide up to 1 amp. It is a DC to DC step down transformer. This is variable and so we can take 5 volts in on this and reduce it down and get exactly 3.8 volts. And so my block diagram I'm going to come out with 5 volts and go to my buck converter. It's also called a buck converter, B-U-C-K, or DC to DC, step down, converter. This is going to give me 3.8 volts DC. So this can power my Bluetooth module, taking 5 volts out of the boost converter here, it's going to step it down and power the Bluetooth module. Independently, the 5 volt is going to power the amplifier. That needs 5 volts. This needs 3.8 volts. We're going to take sound in from my iPod or anything else that can provide uh, Bluetooth music and pass the music audio signal to my amplifier which is going to go up to two speakers and provide um, an output. So one thing I wanted to point out and it's very important is that the DC to DC step down converter is another switching power supply and that's a whole other topic I might do a video on that but it's a very efficient way of stepping it down as opposed to just using a two resistors in a, in a voltage divider circuit. And I want to be as efficient as possible because I want to maximize the power that's in, or the, the energy or the power that's in the battery so that my audio in my amplifier and in my whole system is, is going to last as long as possible. Now as soon as the battery voltage hits 3 volts, 
this cuts off all voltage and so everything loses power and so I'm going to get full power if I had my amplifier turned up to its maximum let's say once we hit three volts on the battery it's going to just stop dead and that's exactly what I want and I'm going to know uh, of course because it drops dead I'm just going to plug it in and wait till it gets back up to a full charge again before I use it and so this is an example of how we need different voltages for different purposes and how we can overcome them by using, for example, a boost converter or a DC to DC step down converter, also known as a book converter, to power different things to make up the circuit and the project that I'm working on. Now, you don't have to worry about any of these modules. I'll be sure to include links to the data sheets for all of them in the description below. And I'll provide search words to find them in eBay, which is where I found and bought all of my modules, including the amplifier and the Bluetooth module, which is uh, an upcoming project. So uh, if, you, if you'd like to see my build on that, just uh, subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified automatically of all upcoming videos. Okay, I wired this up really quickly just to show you the different voltages. Here's the battery. The battery is tied into channel 1 on this 4 channel voltmeter and the battery is currently at 4.04 volts. That battery is tied directly into this which is our DC to DC boost converter. So coming into this is 4.04 volts. Coming out is channel 2 here which is 5 volts which is exactly what we were expecting. This is wired directly into this buck converter which is a DC to DC step down converter so we have 5.02 volts going into this uh, buck converter and coming out of that is the 3.8 volts that we require for that Bluetooth module so I just wanted to throw this together really quickly to show you how easily it is to set up this powertrain which is now ready for me to move on to my next project by the way, if you want to look at the build of this 4-channel voltmeter, check out my YouTube channel. I show you exact design, the complete parts list, and the full build of this 4-channel uh, voltmeter, uh, all for less than $25. This video has already gone on a lot longer than I anticipated, so I won't bore you for much longer. But I did want to finish with showing you one full charge of the battery. So here I have a charging voltage of 5 volts. I'm also showing you the current and the battery voltage as it rises. One thing I will make a note of is that the current on this one dropped off very quickly. Actually after about 3 minutes it dropped from a constant 1 amp and then dropped off as you can see here. It's already down. It's on time lapse so we're, uh, we're about over an hour into it right now but it does uh, go all the way up to just over 4.1 volts and gives me a full charge. I pulled some data off of this and plotted it really quickly and so I just show you a chart. It does mirror the manufacturer spec somewhat and coming up right now the red LED right at the center of the screen is going to turn blue indicating that it is fully charged and that happens right about the two and a half hour mark which is very good for this battery I'm quite pleased you'll notice that when that happened the current uh, dropped to zero and our voltage stayed at 4.11 uh, we are fully charged okay here is the chart taken from the actual data that I captured during this charge that I just showed you. Uh, the horizontal scale here is the time. We're going to about two and a half hours. Uh, left scale here is the voltage um, getting all the way up to 4.1 and the right hand scale is in amps. So we start out at just over one amp and we drop all the way down to zero of course and the voltage starts out around 3.6 and jumps all the way up to just above 4.1 amps. The one thing I just want to point out here is the constant current phase of the charging cycle was very short for this battery, only about two and a half to three minutes. And so uh, it doesn't matter. It's a cheap, uh, inexpensive Chinese battery. It's rated at 
5,000 milliamps. I highly doubt that it is 5,000 milliamps, but for the price I paid for it, I'm happy. The parameters here during this charge definitely conform to the manufacturer's specs. And so at this point, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Follow me on social media. Subscribe to my channel if you want to be automatically notified of upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.